let us pray. Oh God, we give you hearty thanks for the joy of this brand new day. With the sun blazing down upon this part of your world, we bless your name, O oh God, for waking us up this morning and for enabling us who are here in the chapel to have left our homes and to journey to this place. For others who are joining in by other media, O oh God, we thank you for the glorious opportunity of being connected in worship. You have brought us through the past week, and regardless of what our experiences may have been, good or bad, easy or difficult, we rejoice that you have brought us at the threshold of this brand new day. And so, O oh God, as we seek now to reflect upon a portion of your holy word, we pray that you will open our understanding, that you will guide our thoughts, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I speak to you on the topic the mercy softened the heart. Second Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. The king ordered Joab and Abishi and Eti, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders concerning Absalom. Alexander Pope provides this meaningful quotation. Teach me to feel another's war, to hide the fault I see, that mercy I to others show, that mercy show to me, unquote. Indeed, the virtue of mercy is really critical for our happy existence in this world. Mercy is an expression of God's love, kindness, and compassion, which is demonstrated through his forgiveness. Human behavior towards each other is extremely interesting and at times complex. And this is exacerbated by occasions of disagreement, conflicts, and resulting separation. So you can have on one day Persons who are very lovey-dovey, as you can see. Nothing seems to be able to separate them. And then on another day, there can be such conflict that they become even enemies of each other. At the same time, as we think of the interesting and complex nature and we need to recognize that where mercy prevails, the natural tendency to destroy and even to bring about death is avoided as the behavior is changed to dealing gently with opponents. The gripping story of King David and his attitude when faced with the determination of his son Absalom to upsurge the, temple, the, the throne clearly presents the mercy softened heart. David was pushed in a corner by his son and in fact had to run away from home. And in the midst of that, we have him extending words of mercy towards the boy. In fact, 
the intriguing family situation of bad behavior, conflicts, and reactions can be traced back to 2 Samuel chapter 13. In that chapter, King David's household was rocked with the dreadful occurrence of his firstborn son, Amnon, raping his half-sister, Tamar, treating her unjustly afterwards. And then, as a result, her sibling, Absalom, seeking revenge, which lasted for a period of over two years. Eventually, Absalom came up with a plan that resulted in his half-brother being murdered due to the instructions of Absalom, who then ran away for three years. He fled the home before returning to Jerusalem. And after a further two years, having been begged to go and make up with the king, he received forgiveness from King David. Lo and behold, as we come to 2 Samuel chapter 15, Absalom usurped the throne and King David had to run for his life. Run away from Jerusalem. 2 Samuel chapter 18, part of which we read this morning, brings us to the juncture of battle propelled by Absalom leading the army of Israel after he had gone around and got other persons to back him. And he then in a position where he can declare himself as king. So with the army of Israel behind him, he went off to battle with King David, who had to then depend on those persons who were faithful towards him. Nevertheless, King David pleaded earnestly with his three sectional commanders to deal gently with Absalom for his David's sake. What a state in the house, in the family. Despite Absalom's wicked action against his father, King David, the king's desire was that his son's life be spared. When the young man Absalom died in battle, David's love towards the expression, through the expression of mourning, was evident in his withdrawing to his chambers and lamenting, Oh, my son Absalom, my son Absalom, would I have died instead of you? Oh, Absalom, my son my son. Across this nation, our beloved nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and indeed across the Caribbean and even the whole world, conflicts are evidenced in family feuds, in community gang wars, in organizational quarrels, and even church community breakups. Conflicts is a part of our living experiences. However, how we deal with them is the main concern. 
We may at times even seek to justify the eventual expulsion or incarceration or death of someone who we may have had a conflict with. Such as this happened to Absalom. For his seeking to destroy David ended in his own life being taken. Sadly, these adverse incidences result in the ever-increasing and unwelcome statistics across our land of crime, violence, and murders. And we have a thing of saying whenever crime gets out of hand, whenever the murder rate goes up, let's meet with the Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition and see what can happen. Let's meet with the Commissioner of Police and see what he has to say. And the truth is, the birth of these situations start in our very homes. And unless we are prepared to deal with the conflicts in our homes in a humane manner, crime in the society will always spiral out of control. What we are really talking about, therefore, is the quality of our relationships and community life and how these deteriorate due to human separation, standoff, or even imprisonment. Undoubtedly, the story of David and Absalom comes to us and it calls us to deeply reflect on the lack of mercy evident across our living spaces with resulting fallouts contrary to God-ordained relationships of unity and goodwill. At the core, each of us need a mercy-softened heart. Each of us, regardless of what our home situation may be, regardless of what we may think of someone else or someone else may think of us, unless we have a mercy-softened heart, things can go from bad to worse. There is, however, a reality check. And the reality check is that humanity cannot attain this godly characteristic without the, red, the widespread and deliberate decision to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and thereby embrace the Christ-mandated way of living. Not just good enough for persons to live their lives as though God does not exist and that they can set their own standard. And then when things go wrong, we have to throw our hands in the air. In the profound sermon on the monk, Jesus, in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, gave some basic and yet very important advice to his disciples as he prepared them for the complex, complex tasks of ministry. They are timely messages for us. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 26 and 38 to 42. Matthew 5, 
21 to 26, and 38 to 42. And we will be, we will do ourselves well to be guided by those verses. Quite frankly, it is folly for us to ignore Christ's way of life and madly pursue our living agendas as though we are our own life authority, with God being available only at our beck and call to solve our problems and supply our needs as we envision. So when the chips are down, we know how to come to God, and we know how to remind him of our needs. We are bold to set out the list of the things that we need. And when things are going well, we seem to want to just lay him aside and get on with our living. The weakness of the church says that that cannot happen. For in the realm of things, logically, if we ignore God, we will be the losers. We need to have a standard of living. And for us Christians, that standard is enunciated by Jesus Christ in the Gospels. And we must be prepared to commit ourselves to the way of Jesus Christ. Ultimately, my brothers and sisters, we will destroy ourselves as is already occurring in our nation if we do not get back to the basics of accepting Jesus Christ and walking the narrow way of life. Vitally then, mercy as linked to kindness and generosity is a segment of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And just how a mango tree cannot normally bear anything but mangoes, if we want to have a mercy softened heart, we have to link in with the one who bears that fruit, and that is the Holy Spirit. As such, reflecting on the depth of David's love for his rebellious son, Absalom, we are profoundly reminded of the superior love of God for each one of us. Wicked humanity as we are. This morning, it is the most amazing thing that no matter who we are, no matter how wicked we may be from our own analysis or from others' analysis, God loves us. From the greatest to the smallest, from the most significant to those who may be regarded as insignificant, God loves each one of us. And while David would have exhibited a love towards his son that was commendable, nothing, absolutely nothing compares with God's love for humanity. In fact, God so loved the world, according to scripture, that he took on the form of a human servant and came on earth to be harassed by us human beings, to enter into a phase of injustice through us human beings, to be crucified on the cross so that we may receive redemption. That love of God 
as beautifully laid out for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, tells of agape, God propelled unconditional love in Jesus Christ, exhibited as a spiritual gift and described by Paul at the end of chapter 13 as the more excellent way. My beloved, and it's because of that great love of God that we are the ongoing beneficiaries of his rich mercy and unconditional grace, abundantly bestowed on all persons. Truthfully, sin will cause our lives to be destroyed in the same way that it caused Absalom's life to be destroyed if we ignore the plea to believe in Jesus and obtain eternal life. We read about eternal life. For God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him should not perish but may have eternal life. And we read it. We read other passages relating to such. And we might have an idea in our head, you know, that is hairy, fairy stuff. That is about after we die and we go to heaven. The truth is, my brothers and sisters, eternal life is real. And eternal life is this, this decisively active in our daily living. For you and for me who have received eternal life, the whole outlook on life must be different. And if it is one thing that we don't take for granted, it's the life that God gives us. It cannot be acceptable that persons will sniff out the life of others as though they don't matter, as though they're a piece of board, as though they're stone. Life is precious. And so when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, one of the active things about our daily living is the appreciation for life. Not only life in the body, but spiritual life as well. And regardless of what we go through, we rejoice and we thank God for life. But the other thing about this eternal life that is active, that is real, is that this eternal life leads to transformed lives, moving us from being enemies of God to being friends of God and being led by the Spirit of God in our living. Paul says that when this happens, we become God's children. We can claim rightfully that we are his adopted sons and daughters, heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We belong. We are his. He is ours. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. In speaking about this eternal life and the benefits of it and the tremendous change that come about as a result provides this profound verse. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption. When you and I accept the Lord Jesus Christ, beloved, we don't accept it only for a time. We don't accept it only for a particular occasion that may suit us. We accept the Lord Jesus Christ because it is a new way of living and we accept it for all of our lives, even beyond the grave. 
Don't let us take for granted the benefits that God brings to the life of each one of us, including a mercy softened heart. I beseech you, therefore, I believers here in Kingston and those listening to me online, please, beloved, stop the rebellion to a relationship with God and gain life by his mercy softened heart as he in turn provides us with such. At the same time, remember that we will become transformed and therefore change agents in the community, thereby resulting in our world being changed for the better. Wherever Christians are, wherever they are truly living out their purpose in accordance with God's will, that part of our world will never be the same as it was before. For we make a difference, a positive difference across the landscape, but we must be serious about serving the Lord. So my beloved in Christ, this morning the challenge is to obtain a mercy softened heart and to live Christ-like. I pray that we will be enabled by the grace of God in Jesus Christ first to accept the forgiveness that he brings to us and then to live in such a way that we in turn can provide that mercy, softened heart and attending forgiveness to all that we will encounter for we will encounter differences. How we deal with it will make the difference. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bow our heads. We bow our heads in prayer. We thank you, God, for all that you have done in and through us. We thank you that while we were in the depths of sin, you did not scorn our wickedness, although you disapprove of it, but you lavish us in which mercy because of your great love. We thank you, God, for the grace that led to the free gift of salvation which we today enjoy. We pray, O oh God, that as we bow in your presence at this time, that you will enable us, first of all, to experience the forgiveness of our sins, even as we lift up those sins before you right now. We pray, O oh God, that you will wash us clean by the blood of Jesus Christ and enable us to step forward in faith with Christ at the center of our lives, committed to living Christ-like. So we open our hearts to you, God. You know all of our hearts. You know the attendant circumstances of our lives. Minister to us now at our point of need touch and save today, O oh God, as we open our lives to you and accept Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.